Howdy Wolf Pack Friday. We did it. Another fantastic week. Almost down. We get to finish uh, this wonderful week off with a uh, banger of a workout, as somebody texted me and called it. So, hope you guys are excited to finish off the week um, with a little spicy Metcon and um, some snatch cycling progression. So, this is actually our second week of the squat snatch uh, progression. Um, I know everybody's legs are probably still pretty taxed from Tuesdays, squats, wall balls, biking, uh, Wednesdays, uh, hand cleans, deadlift, rowing, shenanigans, um, amazing workouts. But um, if your legs are feeling very, very fatigued, um, I'm totally okay with you guys power snatching tomorrow. Okay, obviously we want to, we did power snatches last week at these uh, reps. We'd like to do the squat snatches and find that progression. However, like I said, depending on how our legs feel, if our positions are off, we're not able to replicate the heavy weights um, that we used in prior weeks, and I think it would just be beneficial just to do this touch-and-go power snatch. Um, you could even mix in some hang snatches if you wanted to get a little bit more of that hip action going um, and work with some lighter weights if our um, if our legs are feeling taxed. But if we feel good, okay, we're going to work our 9-minute EMOM. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, three sets of four, three sets of three, and three sets of two. Now, this is the same EMOM as last week's power snatches. And then the prior week, we did our squat snatch 5, 4, 3. So, as you know, progressions like I like to program, our goal would be to use heavier weights on these um, than we did two weeks ago when we did the squat snatches, right? You're probably not going to be able to replicate um, the power snatch weights just from like a fatigue standpoint, time domain standpoint, right? Um, these are obviously more challenging to drop all the way down to the squat and stand up uh, rather than just catching the power snatch. So... If you could be somewhere around the weights from last week and hopefully a little bit higher than uh, from two weeks ago, that would be a fantastic um, goal. And again, you probably just want to keep it at one weight for all four, one weight for all three, and one weight for all two. Um, I, myself, personally, in these short EMOMs, right, four touch-and-go snatches is going to take you in between, anywhere between 20 and 30 seconds, depending on if you started literally like right on that minute. And I don't want to be fussing around with weights, trying to figure out uh, what I'm going to load. Um, I just want to use that rest period to think about the lift, breathe, recover, and then make any additional changes I need to in that next minute. But again, the choice is yours. You should be all unbroken, right? And remember, we're focusing on the squat snatch or any touch and go work. As soon as we hit the first squat snatch, we need to bring that barbell down as close to our body and then straight down to the ground. Um, and then as we go down, remember all of the energy is going down to the ground. We have to be even more aggressive and more aware. Uh, of getting our hips extended at the top because that barbell is going down and you're trying to go back up you have to uh, add a little bit more intention into that okay so just focus on getting to your hip extension finish your pull right especially on these light weights you can get away with the out and around motion i probably say this on every time we talk about um, our ollie lift but don't take the light weights for granted prime that bar path so when we get to heavier weights you don't really have to think about it um and you can just kind of get right into the into the lift keeping that bar nice and close right so uh nine minutes on that and then Beautiful banger Metcon here. Now, uh, this looks rather, um, it's a lot of writing, right? It looks rather um, aggressive, but I'm going to say this. It's meant to be a relative of a sprint workout, right? It's meant to be relatively quick, and we shouldn't be spending a ton of time on any, excuse me, any of these movements um, realistically to get through this in fast motion, right? So we need to make sure we choose a thruster weight that we can do in these 30 and no more than three sets, right? We should be going pretty big on these thrusters, right? The goal is to go big sets, spike the heart rate, add uh, fatigue to the legs for our box jump overs here. So we shouldn't be doing any less than 10 reps here. Ideally, we're doing a big set off the rip, you know, 12 to 16 or whatever, and then kind of breaking away from there. If you're really good with this barbell, you probably want to shoot closer to like a 18 to 20, something like that, and then finish up on the backside with a smaller um rep count okay so two to three sets maximum like i said we're supposed to be getting through this relatively quick box jump over same thing we should be moving fast on this so choose a box height where you can jump spin step down jump spin step down and keep yourself moving i think these should take you no more than honestly realistically a minute to 90 seconds maximum right it's meant to be fast heart rate should stay up um so that we get a little bit of fatigue and plus this is going to add midline fatigue for our gymnastics okay um, the pull-up motion that we choose to do, again, big sets. We're looking for probably four to five sets maximum. Um, I know the chest bar is a very challenging motion, uh, and some people might be really good with pull-ups. And then chest bars uh, where singles or doubles, right? So I would choose a regular pull-up because we want to go big on the uh, the pull-ups or the big on the gymnastics to start 
and chip away at this 20 relatively quick. So, or we can do as many chest of bars as we can and then go right to pull ups to get through this relatively quick. So four to five sets here, same thing with the toes of bar. Um, I can't really say rep count on this because coming off the chest of bars, I, I was gonna have a little bit of forearm fatigue, midline fatigue and breathing fatigue. So hopefully we can get this done in sets of three to five um, and that'll keep us moving. But um, ideally we're going as big as we can on these toes of bar because you don't need your grip at all for the box jump overs. And then the 30 overhead squats at the end, you just got to get it overhead and just crank out as many as you can and get it done as quick as possible. So I think we're putting a 15 minute time cap on it. If I uh, remember speaking with Shannon correctly for the morning, um, but we're looking at, you know, 90 seconds here again, minute to 90 seconds, three minutes, realistically 90 seconds again, four and a half, uh, max 90 seconds. What is that? Six, seven and a half nine ten minutes right that, that would be a really really good score here uh, for people that can move fastly through this workout so give you a little bit of backside room for that 15 minute cap but again keep in mind it's meant to be a sprint it's meant to be intense right you're meant to move through these motions again 60 to 90 seconds per movement keep us moving through this workout nice and fast and that is the intentions so uh plan and scale the workout as needed to achieve that have a great friday if i don't see you hope you show up for the beautiful saturday wolfman special if not have a great weekend see you again next monday bye